Oakmark portfolio manager Mike Nicholas joins us on that move and, and others that, uh, that uh, Oakmark has been making. Mike, uh, it's great to have you here. I know that the sale of Netflix came in the context of, of you sort of rotating the portfolio a bit, taking some profits in some of the growthier uh, holdings and then rotating into stuff that hasn't run as much. But let's talk Netflix. Uh, how long have you owned it in Oakmark and, and what was it uh, that uh, got you out of it? First, Mike, thanks for having me. Um, we've owned, uh, at Oakmark, we've owned Netflix uh, for quite some time. It's been a long-term holding within the Oakmark fund. Um, there was nothing um, specific other than valuation that ultimately triggered our decision to sell, uh, to sell the shares in the past quarter. I think as we look at the, the broader market, last year we were seeing unusually attractive opportunities to invest in some of our faster-growing non-traditional value investments like a a Netflix or an Uber or an Adobe, um, you know, we thought Gap Accounting was doing a pretty poor job of reflecting the underlying economics of those businesses. But, you know, uh, trends have reversed this year and the market backdrop looks quite different. Uh, the Russell 1000, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the Russell 1000 growth index has outperformed the value index by 26 percentage points year to date, which more than erases last year's recovery in value. So, we're now finding better opportunities to invest in out-of-favor businesses that trade cheap on traditional value metrics like good old-fashioned earnings. And the five names that we purchased this past quarter, certainly not flashy, uh, but they trade for about half the multiple of the names that we sold and we think look really attractive on a risk-adjusted basis. Yeah, and we certainly would like to talk about some of those names, Baxter, International, Carlisle, Selenese, First Citizens, Bank Shares. Just a quick follow, though, on Netflix and the valuation. Because, of course, we all remember the stock did trade well above $600 a share not that long ago when earnings were lower. So was there anything right now in terms of the pace of growth at Netflix or any of the initiatives uh, that gave you pause uh, going into this quarter's print? Or, again, was it just a raw valuation call? Yeah, it was much more of a raw valuation call from our perspective. We certainly were trying to factor in uh, the benefit they could get from cracking down on password sharing and, um, of course, uh, you know, broadening out the ad tier um, but it was, it was uh, really nothing more than valuation. We think it's an extremely well-managed company and a terrific product. I, I noted your ownership of First Citizens Bank shares, which you like, and this is obviously the one that got all the attention when it bought SVB yeah. and got a lot bigger. What, what is did. the thesis here? Because we saw that giant run-up on, on that news, but now people are wondering what comes next as far as profitability and regulation for all these regionals. Yeah, I mean, specifically to First Citizens, we think it's a, it's a really high-quality regional bank with a, with a history of strong operating results throughout economic cycles. And you're right, prior to a couple of months ago, nobody was talking about First Citizens. And, you know, even after this highly accretive um, acquisition of, of Silicon Valley Bank out of FDIC receivership, um, which more than doubled tangible book value per share, um, there's still only a handful of sell-side analysts that cover the stock, which is somewhat unusual for a top 25 U.S. bank. Um, you know, what we like about the company is its, its low-cost deposit franchise, its, uh, its history of prudent lending, and uh, the geographic concentration it has, primarily in the southeast where the population is growing faster. Um, but there's one other nuance that we really like, too, in that um, First Citizens has a pretty unusual core competency. They're one of the leaders of acquiring failed banks out of FDIC auction. So if you look at, you know, the performance of this bank since CEO Frank Holding took over some 15 years ago, they've compounded their tangible book value per share at nearly three times the pace as the average top 25 bank. You know, I'd put that record up against anybody in the industry, including J.P. Morgan, who we have a tremendous amount of respect for. So with the shares trading at tangible book value and a single-digit multiple of earnings, despite the appreciation in stock price so far year-to-date, um, we think it was, uh, it was a worthy addition to the portfolio. And one of the few banks that's, uh, that's had a knack of um, adding value during countercyclical times. Mike, um, you mentioned going for some out of favor names. Baxter International would seem to qualify there. Uh, you know, it seems to be a, a little bit of a victim of concerns about profit margins. It looks cheap, but it's yeah. been a, a nice long term grower. But uh, is there anything to think that there's some kind of a catalyst here in the medical products business? You know, I don't know if there's a specific catalyst. We don't tend to be too short-term or catalyst-driven at Oakmark. Uh, we think much, much longer-term about uh, what a business is worth. You know, in the specific instance of Baxter, um, you're right. There have been um, some ripple effects related to COVID, uh, semiconductor shortages, other inflationary pressures that have certainly weighed 
on the margins and the stock price. And I think that, to, you know, to some people, um, it, you know, surprise them because this is historically a very stable and predictable business. But we see a number of levers that they can pull to ultimately restore those margins um, closer to historical levels. And, you know, we were able to repurchase shares at about half the price that we last sold uh, Baxter in 2019. And on our estimate of normal operating margins, we were paying just a low double digit multiple of EPS. And, uh, you know, prior to COVID, the stock regularly traded at 20 times or above. So, you know, the sentiment is, is obviously quite poor. And as you mentioned, it, it is out of favor. Um, but we think it will eventually recover um, as margins do. And we think it looks like uh, a very good value at today's level. All right, Mike, so a bit of a rotation out of the, uh, the, the, the loved uh, growth stocks into some out-of-favor yeah. value. That's what the market's up to this morning uh, as well. We'll talk to you again soon, Mike. Thank you.